We give God the praise and the glory and honor for all the things that he has done and the things that he continues to do. We say welcome to you, uh, to our friends and family that was coming to tune in with us live stream on tonight for our Wednesday night word here at the Greater Mount Carroll Missionary Baptist Church located 3835 White Water Road right here in the city of Valdosta, Georgia. God get the praise and he get the glory. He get the honor for all the things that he has done and the things that he continues to do. He keeps on blessing us over and over and over again. God is an awesome God and he's truly worthy to be praised. We're thankful for all the many blessings he has bestowed upon us and brought us to the house of worship once again and lift his mighty name up. God is truly worthy to be praised. Let us pray at this time. Our Heavenly Father, God, we thank you. God, we give you praise. God, we give you glory. God, we give you honor for all the things you've done, the things that you continue to do, how you continue to move by your power, by your spirit, and by your anointing. God, you're great and worthy to be praised. And Lord, we just thank you for another day. Sir, and thank you for another opportunity to come to your house for worship. Thank you to be able to come and give your name and praise and learn of your word, oh God. Open up our understanding and our clarity in the word on tonight, God, that you will get the honor, that you get the praise. Father, somebody's standing in need of a healing, a miracle, and their lives to break through right now. Father God, we ask you to bring them down in your power and your anointing that you just have your way in their life and bless them indeed, oh Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. That you will just do a great work in their lives, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We just thank you for it right now and just touch right now, God, and bless your people all over this world and all over this land. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Amen. We give God the praise and the glory once again for being able to come to you. Amen. Live stream right here at Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church. You can join us every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock p.m. and on Sunday at 10.15 a.m. Amen. And share this link with your family and friends, www.worshipwithmtcalvary.org forward slash live. That's www dot worship with mt calvary dot org forward slash live and you know you're going to have the opportunity to give an offering a tithing offering you can also uh connect with us on the link www worship with mt calvary dot org slash giving g-i-v-i-n-g amen you want to connect and give a tithe and and offering as well to be a blessing to the house of the lord you can also down uh, download the application Give us to your phone and uh, go and give that way as well. And choose the Greater Mount Carroll Baptist Church right here in the city of Valdosta as your community organization and give your tithe and your offering. Well, last week we studied on, we talked about that all the world needs is a little bit more love. We talked about that on last week. So certainly we know that all the world needs is a little bit more love. I want to elaborate a little bit more on that on tonight and to talk about it out of 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter in our fifth verse. That's 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter in our fifth verse. Amen. We honor God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. To our ministers that are here at Mount Calvary, Tim and Brother Foster, and Deacon and Deacon Mark, and other saints and friends that we know too. Amen. Uh, all of God's people, the man, the wife, the lady, everyone down and listening. Amen. We want you to in the house on tonight. Bless us here at Calvary as we do our uh, Bible study online, and we thank God for her uh, being here as well on tonight. Amen. Our scripture, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, chapter, verse number 5, it says that doeth not behave itself unseemly, speaking not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Doeth not behave itself unseemly, amen, speaketh no, speaketh not her own, is not easily provoked, Thank you, no evil. So, amen, that's what the word of God says tonight. I want to expound on that for us tonight out of 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter and verse number 5. But I want to talk with you from a different perspective, amen. As we talked from last week about, amen, that talking about love, that all the world needs a little bit more love. But on tonight, I want to expound with you from this topic, love and beyond. Love and beyond. Love and beyond. particular text, another version of this scripture, it reads it uh, in somewhat of the amplified version, it says, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not provoked, nor overly sensitive and easily angered, it does not take into account a wrong and do it, amen, it says that, that love is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not provoked, nor overly sensitive, easily angered, and it does not take into account a wrong and do it. 
love and I'm between two young men. And lastly, another version I want to read with you on tonight, it says that love is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil things it wishes. It pays no attention to the stuff that is wrong. It says love is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. So we're talking about love and beyond. Love and beyond. Amen. Love, amen, is certainly an action word. Amen. I say it's an action word. Amen. You have to, you can say you love, but you got to show action. You got to put some action behind what you say. Love and beyond. Amen. Have you ever heard, have you ever tried to forgive someone and found out you simply couldn't do it? Amen. I said you simply couldn't do it. You, you cried about it. You prayed about it and asked God to help you. But those old feelings of resentment just fail to go away. But amen. But you have to learn how to love and beyond. Put an end to those kinds of failures in the future by basing your forgiveness on faith rather than feelings. Basing your forgiveness on faith rather than feelings. Some people base life on how they feel. I don't feel like getting up. I don't feel like going to work. I don't feel like doing this. I don't feel like doing that. But in a in the Christian walk that we walk with with the Lord, we have to base our walk with the Lord on faith. Amen. Instead of feelings. There's some days that you don't feel like, amen, you say you don't feel like Amen. You uh, got got what you need, but you have to go by what faith. Amen. The Bible tells us we walk by faith and not by sight. So we have to not rely on our feelings. Our feelings will get us in trouble. Our feelings will have us thinking the wrong thing. Our feelings have us going down the wrong road. That's what sometimes people do. They base a lot of their uh, actions and a lot of their uh, responses based on feelings instead of faith. Amen. You got to have faith in God. You got to believe God and trust God that God's going to work it out for your favor. So, amen. It says that we have to learn how to forgive, amen, by faith. Forgive by faith, amen. Forgive, not just uh, on, let it be based on feelings, but forgiveness on faith rather than feelings. Forgiveness on faith rather than feelings. In other words, we got to love beyond love and be. Young, amen. Forgiving love, amen. Amen. Leaving the pain behind, but love and be young, you know. Uh, true forgiveness doesn't have anything at all to do with how you feel. True forgiveness don't have anything at all to do with how you feel, amen. But love, amen, and beyond that, amen, goes beyond what you feel like, amen. But you have to do what is right in the eyes of God. You have to have that forgiveness. Amen. Because that don't have anything to do with how you feel about it. Amen. You have to take your feelings out of the equation because if you keep your feelings in the equation and keep your feelings in front of what you're dealing with, you're never going to get to the point where you need to go beyond that thing. Amen. Uh, over that thing or get over that thing or get uh, a rise above that particular thing. But you have to not rely on your feelings, but rely on your faith and trust in God. Amen. True forgiveness doesn't have anything at all to do with how you feel amen that's what's wrong something wrong with the people in the world today amen they don't feel like i don't feel like going to church i don't feel like giving my tithes my offering i don't feel like praising the lord i don't feel like giving them glory amen but you don't have to you, that's what's wrong amen get out of your feelings and get into the faith of the lord amen once you do that Amen. God can begin to work some things out. God can begin to move some things for you. And so, amen, sometimes you don't feel 100% in life. Amen. You don't feel, amen, that you're yourself all the time. But you have to get beyond your feelings. Amen. People sometimes, people walk by them and they maybe not, maybe they didn't see them. Maybe they didn't actually recognize them. Maybe they had something else on their mind. And so they get upset because they say, well, that person didn't speak to me. That person didn't say anything to me. And then, get, then they get caught up in all of their feelings. Yeah, they get caught up in their feelings, and then they start feeling some kind of way, some type of way. And it was like what they thought it was. They really see you. They really uh, see you. Uh, they notice that you were in their environment, but they get caught up in their feelings. But the truth is, it doesn't have anything at all to do with how you feel. It is the act of will. Forgive is an act of will. You got the will to do it. You 
you got to let the Lord allow you to do it. You got to let him lead you. To do it is an act of will on your part. Amen. God not going to, amen, put you down to the ground and make you do, amen, do the thing. But he's going to get his, it's, it's your act of will. We don't serve a God, amen, is a dick. Amen. We don't serve a God. Is a is a God that amen, give you the right to choose to do the right thing or to do the right thing. He gives you that free will that you can do. So that is it's an act of will that you, amen, be able to forgive the love and beyond. To love and beyond. Because amen, if forgiveness has got to be you cannot have no forgiveness without having some kind of love. Amen. You cannot have forgiveness without having some kind of love and that that godly love, amen, love that will help you forgive because if you don't have the love of God on the inside, you won't be able to live, forgive or love and be young. It is based on obedience to God and on faith in him. By, amen, forgiving, it's based on, amen, the obedience of God, being obedient, being obedient because our text says that love does not seek, it's not self-seeking, it's not provoked, nor overly sensitive, easily angry. It does not take an account of wrong and do it. No, it's not keeping a man a record of the wrong doing. True love, amen, the love and truth, love and true forgiveness. It don't keep account of things that are done wrong, but it's based on obedience to God's word, and God's word tells us, God's word tells us, if you it may get anything out of this lesson on tonight, the love and beyond, the word of God tells us in Matthew, the sixth chapter, and the 14th verse, the word tells us in St. Matthew, the sixth chapter, and the 14th verse, amen, that's St. Matthew 6 and 14, it says, for if ye forgive men that trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you, but if you forgive not men that trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. In other words, if you don't forgive somebody else, amen, for their wrong, God ain't going to forgive you for your wrong. You got to, amen, you want forgiveness, you got to be able to forgive somebody else too. So it's important that we understand that concept and that scripture that tells us in St. Matthew 6, 14 and verse 15, it says if we forgive men, God going to forgive us. But if we don't forgive men, God is not going to forgive us. We got to, we got to, we got to be having a forgiving heart. Amen. Some people always want uh, the Lord to forgive them and the Lord to help them, but they don't want to never, amen, forgive nobody else, amen, and get that uh, out of their heart. But you got the love and beyond. That's love and beyond. Forgiveness is love and beyond. Amen. So you got to be obedient to God's word. This means that you're, you, once you've forgiven a person, you need to consider them permanently forgiven. It's not a part-time thing. It's not, well, I'm going to do it for a little while. I'm going to, uh, uh, it's a trial basis. But forgiveness is a permanent forgiveness. You got to do it, amen, with it mean it being more of a permanent thing, a lifelong thing. You just can't say, well, I'm just going to forgive you on Monday, but I'm going to bring it back up on Tuesday or Wednesday or next month or next year or whenever I see you again, I'm going to bring it. But forgiveness, all, amen, should be a permanent thing a permanent uh, solution to the problem. And when old feelings rise up within you and Satan tries to convince you that you haven't really forgiven, then you must resist him because the devil going to bring some old feelings. He'll try to bring some up. Amen. He'll try to uh, re, re aggravate it or agitate it uh, to bring some things back to your mind and back to your memory and back to your heart or something like that. He'll, that's, that's, that's the enemy job try to keep you bogged down in that particular thing, in that particular situation, in that particular circumstance, that where you won't forgive, where you won't let it go, where you won't let God, amen, release you from it. But you have to be careful. And, and you know, you're human, amen. We all are human. We all are in the flesh. We all, we didn't, none of us woke up this morning, amen, and we had to knock a crown off our head like we made it to heaven or we made it to glory yet. No, it wasn't like that. So we must, amen, Understand that we have not arrived yet. We have not made it to heaven yet. So we must understand that. And if we're not there yet, that means that we make going to make some mistakes. We're going to go the wrong way sometimes. We're going to say the wrong thing. We're going to think the wrong thing. We're going to do the wrong thing. But
But we got to understand that we had a forgiving power of the Lord. And the Lord knows and he can, he can forgive us. But when you understand your old feelings, you in the flesh, and sometimes the old thoughts come, come to you, my old feelings, or, or the enemy bring that thing to you, what they did to you, what they said to you, how they treated you. But you got to learn how to resist those things. You got to learn how to put those things back to bed. You got to learn how to put those things back in their place. Amen. You got to resist them. You got to fight against them in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit. Amen. You got to let the love go more than just a surface love, but love in beyond. You got to do a love and beyond. Go beyond, amen, what it required. Amen. Sometimes you have to go the extra mile of the way. You have to go the extra mile of the way. You just can't just do a little bit. You got to go a little bit further, amen, in this journey. Amen. Some people think, well, I got to give this much percent. I got to give. You got to give whatever it takes for that particular day and for that particular season in your life. Some days you're going to have some good days in life. Some days you're going to have some tough days in life. Some days you're going to have some ups and, and you're going to have some downs. But you got to understand, you got to give it all for that particular day. And when tomorrow comes, you thank God for the next day and give him praise and do what you got to do for that day, amen, that you may be able to survive and you may be able to endure whatever comes your way. But understand, the enemy going to bring stuff up back to you. He's going to try to regurgitate it in your heart and in your mind and in your spirit and bring it back. But you got to be convinced that you, amen, have really forgiven. You have to let that thing go and truly resist it, truly fight against it. And sometimes it's not going to be easy. Sometimes it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be a light thing. Sometimes it's going to be a hard thing. Sometimes it's going to be a tough thing. Sometimes it's going to be a tasking thing. But you have to learn how to resist the enemies, amen, bringing those thoughts to your heart, to your mind, and to back to you about that situation or that individual. But that's what it means to love and beyond, to go beyond just the regular. We got to go beyond, amen, just the surface. Got This thing is deep. This thing is, um, this thing is deep, uh, people of God. This thing is really deep. And it says that love, you know, our scripture in First Corinthians 13 and 5 talks about our love, you know, don't keep doing certain things. It don't keep, uh, it don't pay attention to a suffered wrong. It don't, it don't focus on the wrong, but amen, it looks for a way, amen, to show the love of God and the peace of God and the understanding of God in our lives. Uh, we have to say, no, you've already forgiven that person. I refuse to dwell on those old feelings. I refuse to keep regurgitating that. I keep, refuse to keep vomiting that up. I, re I refuse to keep going over those things. I refuse, amen, to stay, amen, bound up, stay in a rut, stay, amen, disconnected, amen. But I refuse, amen, you got to take a stand, amen, to love and beyond. Then according to 1 John 1 and 9, it says we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's the basic thing that we are able to get salvation that we got to confess our sins and God is faithful to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Believe you, believe that you receive forgiveness and cleansing from your sin of unforgiveness and from all unrighteousness associated with it, including any remembrance of having been wrong. Amen. That's how you got to forgive it. You got to throw it in the sea of uh, forgiveness. You got to forget it and get on over it. Amen. Forget it and forget on over God have thrown our sins and our wrongdoings and our, our missteps and our mistakes and our faults and our failures. He thrown them in the sea, amen, and forgot about them. And so we must do the same thing, amen, to be able to love and be young. We must do the same thing in order for us, amen, to be successful, in order for us to sustain in the body of Christ, amen, all of, in order for us to be strengthened in the, the body of Christ. We have to love Amen. And beyond. Uh, the next thing I want to bring to your attention is that have you heard anyone ever say, I may forgive, but I never forget? Yeah. Yeah, I know y'all heard that before. Amen. I may forgive, but I will never forget. And that's a second rate count of forgiveness that, amen, people use as believers. We're never supposed to settle for that type of a belief. You're to forgive supernaturally, even as Christ f to God gave, forgave you. Amen. Even the way that God forgave you. What if God did us like that? Amen. What if God did us like that? You know, I, I forgive you, but I ain't going to never forget. Every time you come before the throne of grace, I'm going to bring it back up to you. Don't you remember that, brother so-and-so? Don't you remember that? 
to so and so when you did this, when you did that. What if God did that to you every time you went to Him to ask Him for something, to petition Him for something, to ask Him for something? But 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 God loved us beyond. God loved us beyond that. He Amen. Throw our mistakes, our sins, our failures into the sea of Amen. Forgiveness. He hadn't thought no more about it. He ain't brought it back up. Amen. When you ask Him to forgive you, when you confess your sins and ask Him to forgive you for your sins, God did it and He forgot about it and He restored you back to the body of Christ. And that's what we have to do. Amen. Here on planet Earth, we have to have the same Christ like, Amen, example, the same Christ like way of doing things and know that you forgive supernaturally, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. God forgave us for Christ's sake. We have to we have to go through, amen, and come through the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, to get to God. And God forgave us through his son because his son shed his blood on the cross. His son went in between, amen, damnation and eternal life for us. He went between that to, to stop us from going, amen, to a dying hell. He saved us. He redeemed us. He forgave us. He went, amen, on our bond. He stood between God and eternity and said, Lord, I'll take their place. I'll do what I need to do to save them. And if Jesus did that, amen, we need to stand in between some things in our life. Amen. Stand in between some things that are going through somebody else, what they're going through and what they're dealing with. Stand between those things and say, listen, I forgive you. I let it go because I want to love and beyond. I want to be, amen, to be able to love and go beyond just the words, but I want to be out action. I wanted to have results. I wanted to do something. I wanted to change things. I wanted to put it in the right perspective. I needed to, amen, be, amen, that God would get the glory, that God would get the praise, and that God would get the honor. Amen. Ephesians 4 and 32. Ephesians 4 and 32 says, and be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as as God, for Christ's sake, has given you. That's what we're talking about. Jesus, amen, went, amen, through, amen, the cross, went through, amen, the suffering, went through, amen, the grave, and came out, amen, early Sunday morning, as we say, amen, just for you and I. But we have to love what, and be kind one to another, tenderhearted, and forgiving one another, amen, forgiving one another. You are to forgive as God forgives. That is the principle. That's what it means to love and beyond, to forgive as God forgives. And if we, if we get forgive as God forgives, amen, the world will be a whole lot better place. Amen. Just, now, I'm not talking about you fussing because somebody a Democrat or somebody a Republican, somebody did somebody that, somebody did this to somebody other race, somebody did this to some other nation. No, we need to learn how to forgive like Christ did and forget about it. Wash it off the board. They may erase it off the board. Take it off the board. You know uh, how you be in the school and, hey amen, they got a chalkboard. They used to have a chalkboard. Now they got a, hey amen, a smart board and things like that. So you just erase it with a, hey amen, erase it, all the markers off. Hey amen. But once you do that, it's, it's not on there anymore. You can't see it no more. And that's how God wants us to do. We need to, hey amen, when we forgive, we need to erase the thing. We need to take it off the board. Hey amen. It need to disappear in our hearts and in our minds and in our spirits as we love and beyond. We need to take it off our heart, mind, and spirit. Wipe it all the way out. Let it be erased all the way out. Amen. And when you do that, you truly have forgiven. Amen. As God has us to forgive. Why? Because Jesus left it all on the cross. I said Jesus left it all on the cross. How do you say that, Pastor? Because Jesus left it all on the cross. When Jesus was on the cross, and we understand the scripture to say that he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He left it on the cross. Amen. He didn't take it when he when he asked the Lord to forgive them for what they was doing to him. He left it on the cross. That was love and beyond. He left it on the cross. Amen. He didn't take it down when they took him off the cross. He didn't take it down in the grave. Amen. He didn't take it back to glory with him when he ascended. Amen. But he left it on the cross. And that's our only example that we need to leave things on the cross. Leave it where it happened at. Leave it where it occurred at. Leave it where it was dealt with at. And if you learn to leave it at the cross, amen, leave it at the place of hurt, place, place of pain, the place of suffering, amen, the place of damnation. Leave it on the cross. Learn to leave it right there. 
Amen. And God can work it out. Imagine if Jesus was trying to die for our sins. Amen. And, and, and for our uh, salvation and for our eternal life. And he hasn't forgiven them. You imagine him trying to, amen, to, amen, to make, amen, make it back out, out of the grave. That would have been a great weight on him. Amen. That would have blocked him from doing what the Father wanted him to do. But he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He left it on the cross. And that is our example on tonight, that we have to learn how to leave stuff on the cross. Amen. Leave it right there. Don't, t don't, take, don't take it back home. Don't take it back to work. Don't take it back to the family reunion. Don't take it, amen, back to your, amen, job. Don't take it back, amen, to your neighborhood. Whatever it is, don't take it back. But learn how to leave it on the cross. And when you learn how to leave things on the cross, you learn how to love and beyond. Amen. To go down the road a little bit further. Amen. Just go a little bit further. And when you go a little bit further, amen, God can work with you. God can take you to where you need to go. Amen. Jesus would have never would have got up out the grave if he had not left it on the cross. But because he left it on the cross, amen, he left it on the cross. And he left it on the cross that released him from that. Amen. Whatever they did, with this, amen, whatever the nails in his hands and the nails in his feet, the thorn crown on his head, amen, the piercing in his side, amen, the, the whipping all night long. He left it on the cross. And when you leave it on the cross, amen, you, and, and you leave it in God's hand, amen, and put it in God's hand. See, it's, a, it's, it's, not a, it's, not a, it's not a human thing, but it's a spiritual thing. When you love and be young, it's a spiritual thing. It's not just a, a human thing, but it's a spiritual thing. You have to have a connection with God because you can't do it in your flesh. You can't do it in yourself. You can't do it of your own power, but it's going to take the power and the help of the Lord that you love and beyond. So we just look at people and say, how, I don't know how in the world they can uh, get along with that person. How in the world they can let that go. How in the world they can let that go. How in the world they can get over that. Because why? They learn how to leave it on the cross. They learn how to love according to the Bible. Amen. Love, learn how to love according to the Bible the way Christ loved them. Learn how to forgive the way Christ forgave them. It wasn't of their own power, but it was the help and the power of God to help them learn how to love and beyond and learn how to leave it on the cross. And you got to learn how to do the same thing, uh, my brothers and sisters. You got to learn how to do the same thing. Amen. To leave it on the cross and let it stay in the hands of the Lord. Amen. Let it stay in the hands of the Lord. Yes, to release that person from guilt permanently and unconditionally and to operate as if nothing bad ever happened between you. You got to, you got, that's how you got to deal with it. You got to, amen, go, amen, and not, I ain't saying fake it. I said you got to walk around, you got to be able to walk around and go and live your life as if it never happened. You got to do that just like it never happened. You got to be experienced that and it's going to take the power of God for you to do that, to let that go, to release it, to love, amen, and beyond. You are to personally forgive, personally forgive, personally forgive as well as you, when you forget, forget as well as forgive on purpose. You got to do it per, on purpose to forget as well as forgive on purpose. As you do that, something supernatural will happen in your spirit and in your mind. You'll feel a release and a lifting. Amen. In your heart and your mind and your spirit, you'll be back connected with God. Amen. Connected with uh, the spirit, connected with the power of God, connected with your destiny, connected with where God want to take you, connected with what God want to do for you and through for you. Amen. And for you, you'll be connected back, but you have to release it. Amen. On purpose. Amen. You have to forget as well as forgive. And as you do that, amen, something supernatural will happen. The pain once caused by that particular thing would disappear moving past your pain to your purpose you have to move it past your pain to your purpose and god got a purpose for you god got a purpose for your life amen you're not just living down here just to be living just to be existing but god has a purpose and he has a plan for your life and if god got a purpose and he got a plan for your life you got to move past the pain toward your purpose and that's what the enemy don't want you to do he don't want you to move toward your purpose. He want to keep you tied up in your pain. He want to keep you tangled up in your pain. He want to keep you burdened down in your pain. He want to keep you suffering in 
your pain. He wants you to keep still crying in your pain. He wants you still to be mad in your pain. He wants you to still be angry in your pain. He wants you to still be, amen, aggravated, agitated in your pain. But I come to tell you on tonight, amen, move past your pain to your purpose. And when you move past your pain and your purpose, then you can love and be young. You can truly love and be young. Your love won't have the wrong meaning or have the wrong motive, but you'll move beyond your love. Forgiveness release you from the burden of resentment, hate, jealousy, and envy. It releases you. When you, amen, move past that thing, it releases you from that burden. Amen. It releases you from that weight, that heaviness, amen, that you have in your life. It releases you from it. And the power of God will wash away the effects of it all. And you'll be able to leave it behind and you, for once and for all. The power of God, not your power. But the power of God will be able to release you from that thing. Amen. And the effects of it. And then you'll be able to leave it behind once and for all. You'll be free and know you're free. You won't be on no parole. You won't be on no probation. Amen. You won't be, amen, waiting around to see what's going to happen. But you'll be fully released. You'll be free in spirit, free in your mind, and free in your heart, free in the way you talk, free in the way you communicate, free in the way you live, free in which way you go and which way you deal, which way you worship and which way you praise God. I don't know about you, but somebody need to be free on tonight. Amen. Free and released from the things that hold them down, that keeps their love from flowing from breast to breast and heart to heart, from mind to mind, to body and soul. Amen. Be to be fully released of those things in the mighty name of Jesus. Don't Amen. Become an emotional bookkeeper. Don't become an emotional bookkeeper. Some people keep a record of what somebody did to them, how they did them wrong, and the date, the time, and the place. Amen. Who all was there? They got a record in their mind. They can remember like it was yesterday. Y'all don't hear people say that. I can remember how it was like it was yesterday. Amen. They got a book, keeping an emotional bookkeeper in their mind. And you got that stuff in your mind. You got that stuff kept away in your mind. And you put that in your mind. Then something else happened. You put that in your mind. Then something else happened. You put that in your mind. Then something else happened. You put that in your mind. And all that stuff in your mind and your heart and your spirit. And you can't get the spirit of God nowhere around because you're full of all the other stuff. Full of all the other mess. Full of all the other junk. Amen. It comes a time out. You know, you can't keep putting clothes in the closet and never take nothing out. Yeah, I said you can't keep putting stuff in the closet and never take nothing out. I know some of y'all ladies out there, amen, got a lot of shoes. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all got a lot of shoes. You can't keep buying shoes and keep buying shoes and keep buying shoes and never take nothing out and never give nothing away and never get released nothing. Amen. After a while, it's going to be too crowded for anything else to get in there. That's how sometimes our minds are and our spirits are. We are, we got an emotional, amen, bookkeeping in our mind of some things that happened in our lives, some things where people crossed us the wrong way, where they talked to us the wrong way, where they dealt with us the wrong way, where they stabbed us in the back, where they talked about you, where they scandalized you, where they did you wrong. But you got to love and beyond. You got to release that. You got to throw away that book, amen, throw away that book. Stop bookkeeping that stuff. Throw it away. Get it out of your heart. Get it out of your mind. Get it out of your spirit. Get it out of your soul. Get it out of you. Just release it and let it go. Throw that book away. Get it out of there. Burn it up. Amen. Throw it in the trash can. Shred it. Whatever you got to do with it. Get it out of there. Amen. Because that's where the enemy want to keep you at. Emotionally a bookkeeper. Amen. Emotionally a, a bad thing. But if you want to keep some books, keep some good some books of things that God done done for you, some positive things that God done done for some positive things that God done delivered you from, done blessed you with, amen, done brought you out of, done brought you over, done saw you through. That's what you need to keep in your mind, your heart, and your spirit. That's your emotional bookkeeping, amen, some glorious things, some praising things, some things that you know if you had not been for the Lord, amen, you wouldn't have made it. But you got to keep those things, those positive things, amen, because the Bible lets us know that life and death, amen, and the power of the tongue. And so it is in your mind. There's life and death in your mind and your your heart. You keep things that are deadly, things that are weighted down, things that are dark, things that are dreary, things that ain't going nowhere, things that are not prospering you, things that are not blessing you. You keep those things in your mind and your heart. You never, your mind is all bottled up. Your mind is full of junk, full of mess, full of all kind of stuff. And you can't, you wonder why, amen, when you come to church, when you wonder why, when you read the word, you wonder why when you pray, you can't get a breakthrough because your mind is full of all these emotional, amen, bookkeeping things that have happened in the past, stuff that happened 
20 years ago, 25 years ago, people dead and gone. It don't happen. You still got it in your mind. Amen. Ain't nothing you can do about it now. They gone on the glory. Amen. They gone on wherever they gonna go. Amen. But you got it still emotionally in your mind and in your heart. So you must learn how to release those things. Amen. Emotionally. Amen. Stop keeping books on things like that. Amen. If you're gonna keep book, keep books on things that amen are positive things, things that are encouraging, things that are uplifting, things that give God the glory, things that give God the praise. Them some good things to keep in your mind. And keep your mind filled with those things. But you keep your mind filled with negative emotional bookkeeping things. It only weight you down, only keep you burdened down, only keep you in that same situation. And you wonder why you're the same place you was in last year, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, you hadn't moved beyond that point. You got to let it go. You got to let it go. So don't become an emotional bookkeeper. Keep in careful accounts of the wrongs that have been suffered. Learn to forgive and forget. And when you do that, you love and beyond. Your love has gone beyond just words. It's gone beyond some things. And see, when you do that, that don't bother you no more. When you see that person, that don't bother you no more. When you hear certain names, it don't bother you no more. Amen. When you when you when you hear about somebody that went through the same thing you went through, all you can do is give God the praise and give God the glory. And say thank you, Jesus, and you you're free. You ain't you, that ain't that ain't got no bad feeling in your heart and in your mind and your throat. Your throat get all tight all up and you, your blood pressure go all up. You need to let it go. You need to let it go. Learn to forgive and forget. It will open up a whole new world of blessings for you. I see it open up a whole new world of blessings for you when you learn to love and be young. And when I say love and be young, that means love and be young, forgive, forget, and let God have it. You can't do nothing with it. Let God deal with it. Leave behind and watch that it will open up a flow of favor, prosperity, and blessings. When you love and be young, and you leave all that baggage behind, and you, and you leave it behind, it will open up a, a man of flow of favor, prosperity, and blessings. But we got to learn how to love and be young. As I said on last week, that all the world needs is a little more love. And on tonight, we need to learn how to love and be young. Not just in words, but in action. And, and go beyond just saying I love somebody. <clears throat> go beyond that, but say you love them and you're going beyond what they're going through. And when we do that, amen, God can get the praise and the glory out of our journey together. Let us love and be young. And let the Lord work it out in our favor. And he will get the praise. And he will get the glory. And he will get the honor. We hope we have said something to you on tonight. And encourage you out of the book of First Corinthians 13 chapter and the 5th verse. To learn how to love and be young. And encourage you on tonight. Amen. That in order for God's spirit. Sunday school, our first conference call, Sunday school. And so every Sunday at 9.20 a.m., tune in and dial into the number. Amen. You might want to write it down on your, on your amen, and put it in your phone, lock it in your phone and call it Sunday school, or a conference call and lock that number in at the access code, dial that number. Don't forget to press pound. But when you join in and when you link in, please remember to mute your phones until you need to ask a question or come in or join in the discussion. So please remember that. But look at those not look at that number. Amen. We'll let it stay on the screen for a little bit longer. Amen. That you write the number down and the access code. And join us on every Sunday. That's first every Sunday from nine twenty AM to about ten oh five. 
Then we have to go off, amen, at 10.05. That way we can go ahead and do our live stream for our morning worship at 10.15. But write the number down and then the access code. And join us, amen, for, amen, our conference call Sunday school at 9.20 a.m. on every Sunday. Amen. The number is 701-802-5337. 701-802-5337. And then you have the access code, amen, as well. Amen. You can dial, and don't forget to hit the pound button when you dial for the access code. And then you'll be connected and join up with other saints of God that you may be able to ask questions, make comments, or join in the discussion for Sunday school. Amen. We thank God and give God the praise for, amen, expanding uh, things a little bit further while we're, amen, doing this, amen, coronavirus pandemic. But we give God the praise of God is still worthy to be lifted up and worthy to be magnified. Will you join me in the closing prayer on tonight? Father, we thank you. God, we give you praise. And God, we give you glory. Lord, we give you honor on tonight for all the many blessings you have bestowed upon us, how you keep on blessing us over and over again. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings you bestowed upon us. We ask you, Father God, to just look upon your people on tonight, God. You know what they stand in the need of. You know their heart desire. You know what they've been praying for, they've been seeking for. And God, you got all power in your hands. You can do anything but fail. And Father, we ask you right now to touch them in a special way from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Bless them in the deep. Let your power and your anointing fall afresh on them right now, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, just touch them right now, God. Somebody need a healing. Somebody need deliverance. And somebody need a breakthrough right now, Father God. We just ask you to touch them right now. Somebody's downtrodden. Somebody's worried about this, that, and the other, God. But just touch them right now, God. We pray, Lord, the lesson on tonight will help them to learn how to, amen, love and be young. To go beyond, amen, just simple words. But go into action and to love and beyond. And let those things be released from their hearts. Amen. Don't hold any grudges. Don't hold any wrongdoings in their minds. Don't keep no records, oh God. But the only record they keep of the goodness of you, oh Father God, and what you've done for them. And you get they give you praise and they give you glory and they give you honor, God. And we thank you for all things. And we pray, Lord, for those that are on the prayer list, those that are sick and shut, and those that are bereaved. We pray, Lord, you touch them in the mind of the name of Jesus. And God, you know we stand in need of as a country, as a people, Lord God. We pray you give us a healing across this land in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for it. Give your name the praise and give your name the glory. And give you thanks for all things. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest rule in the Bible with us henceforth now and forever. And all God people say amen. Amen. God bless you. And you have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Don't forget and always remember, you don't have any trouble, but all you need is faith in God. God bless. <laughs>